Hey, it's Captain Morgan. Derealist JB here. Welcome to another episode of Co-op Co Reviews. Reviews. So we're back for yeah. a new season. Happy Happy New Year, man. Yeah, it's been a little bit. Um, this is our uh, first movie review, and it's a little divisive uh, around the uh, around the intersphere. You are putting that lightly, very lightly. <laughs> I mean, you know, we're we're cordial, but you know the internet. Yeah. No, it, it's actually interesting because this uh, we're doing Captain Marvel today. If you didn't read the <laughs> the title, um, now you know. <laughs> <laughs> it does some really good, prog dare I say, progressive mm -hmm. things, and it does also some, you know, some might find not so special, not so good things. I don't think it deserves yeah. a zero the same way I don't think it really deserves a 10. Absolutely. I'm going to start this review out by saying, A, I really liked the movie, but I recognize it is a flawed film. That is, that is how I'm going to say this. That's how I'm going to start this review out. I am going to say I just did not like the movie. It is not the worst, but, you know, it certainly is not the best. It's not Thor the Dark World. It is not Thor the Dark World, uh, but it is also definitely not like, you know, Black Iron Panther. Man or Black Panther. Ooh, it's definitely not Black Panther. Uh, unlike Black Panther where it was kind of just literally just, it just happened, right? Mm -hmm, they didn't mm -hmm. plan for it to really be a cultural movie. Right, right. They didn't really try to push any kind of ideology kind of they kind of just did it right you know right it wasn't like in the pre-frame i feel like at least in this movie this movie had the pre-frame like hey we're gonna do all of these things to try to push this ideology mm -hmm. and audiences will identify with it and love it just like they did with black panther so putting all that aside i think as a whole i think i really enjoyed the strong female character in a leading role and i think that was great I think it was a great idea, but I am not a fan of the execution. Um, I think there are lots of things missing about the details of who she is as a person, mm -hmm. which, you know, I, it's, you know, if you don't know, uh, it's in the previews that, mm -hmm. you know, Captain Marvel, uh, the main character, she has amnesia. Right. She's got memory loss. She's, she's got she's memory to loss. And who she is as a character, which I think is an interesting take on these superhero origin stories because the ones we're used to you know the the iron man one hulk captain america the original thor these were all about the characters learning how to become superheroes and how to use their powers for good where this one i think was she had the power to begin with and it wasn't her learning how to use the power but learning that she could use that power as a, as far as you know, uh, just an entertaining movie. It's you know, it's entertaining. I had I had fun, and I really it. really loved the chemistry bet between her and Nick Samuel Fury. L. Jackson. Yeah, they they were great. That was my favorite part of the film was just them it, being the buddy cop, the buddy space cop movie yeah. that this was. This yeah. was a buddy cop movie with a space cop. With a space cop. It's a space cop and an Earth cop, and yeah. they're just you know they're just they're just shenanigans. Yeah. you know that that. You know, when it gets down to that, like those character moments that Marvel is just the best at, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. those moments are golden. Those moments, I feel like they've mastered and they're just really good at it. When mm -hmm. you get two characters on the same screen, there's going to be chemistry and they're going to bounce off of each mm -hmm. other. Well, you know, as far as final words, you know, before we get into the spoiler yeah, yeah. Uh, portion is uh, if you're a Marvel completionist, then yeah, go see this movie. If you're not, and you're just looking for a fun superhero movie, there might be some fun in there, but there might also, if you want a little bit more, there it might not be there, you mm -hmm. know? But definitely, if you have, like, a, a daughter or, or someone who yeah. you really feel... I do feel like there's positive messages mm -hmm. in this movie. That would be good for children. It's definitely got that similar cultural feel, like, mm -hmm. from Wonder Woman or Black Panther, where you're just taking these children off to see this just for representation. Mm hmm Okay, so if you're still here, you've seen the movie. Yes, yes, yes. Now we're getting into our <clears throat> spoilers. So I'd like to talk about my oh, least man. favorite part of the film. Is it the eye? That's no, I where, thought that was... That's where I threw my hands up, like, really? No, no. I think <laughs> the most frustrating part of the film was the final fight scene that was executed like every Marvel final fight scene. I couldn't see what was going on. It was too dark. Everybody was wearing the same colors except for Carol. And it, like, it was cut to hell. You, you mean with her and Talos, and Talos has that 
gravity thing and he's throwing stuff and all that one or where she's fighting all of her old teammates oh yeah 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 i didn't i didn't like uh how the action was cut in this mm-hmm. film it mm-hmm. was very uh very sporadic very like blockbustery it was know? it was kind of a weird some weird editing choices um, but I, I, I did like that at the end she said that, no, I'm not going to put myself down to your level because I, because I don't have to, because I am better than you. But here's my thing about all that, because that was supposed to be like the defining, oh, super dupe, super feminist like moment, like, I don't have to come down to your level, man. It's like, dude, okay, but their relationship was barely established. Right. Mm -hmm. We see that, you know, if you've seen the movie, she's been on the planet Mm -hmm. for six years, pretty much mentored by this man. Yeah. You know, like there's, there's but we never we never see of, much chemistry between them. Exactly. And that's, that's what bothers me. Is there that was supposed to there be was, s- it was way better between her and Samuel L. Jackson. They had more chemistry than her and this person that she's known for years. Yeah, she was known and trained and mentored by this man mm-hmm. for years. And when she found out that she's essentially been betrayed. There's, there was barely any kind of real emotional reaction mm-hmm. other than, you know, she might have been like mildly pissed off, right? But there was no like, there was no like real like moral like conflict of, mm-hmm. oh, should I go with the Kree, which I've been for six years, right? Yeah. Or do I come back to Earth and really give down, get down with that? There was or, no, do, or do I, you know, help the Skrulls who I've been yeah. fighting for years? There and- was... There was it, it was no it was a it was moral, a quick turn. There was no it was just oh they betrayed me and I believe you guys. Uh, there's evidence. All right, I guess I'm on your side now. There was yeah. no real yeah. like not even like a like a really pissed off like tear when she finally confronted him about That's it. That's like, true. You know, I'm not saying that she has to mm. show like a moment of weakness. I'm not saying like she has to break down. And, I uh, maybe that would have been maybe that would have been better because because there was this this theme that they set up about Jude Law's character saying, you know, don't be so emotional. Well, maybe it could be her finally showing, like, you know, like, intense emotion. Because it felt like she was very closed off a lot of the times. Yeah. I think, uh, number one, uh, when you have, when you give these, like, you know, small-time, essentially small-time directors, right, working Mm -hmm. with very closed budgets, and then you give them this big bombastic budget but you at the same time have these executives Mm -hmm. shoving down your throat what Mm -hmm. needs to be in this film yeah what it needs to be about who needs to be in it right that can Mm -hmm. really just 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 weigh down on the production of the movie itself Mm -hmm. so they might have had their own ideas of what they wanted carol to be or what she wanted to look like or how she wanted to interact with the characters they may have You know, and it does seem like, you know, especially after a certain time, it definitely did pretty much sprint to the end, Mm -hmm. you know, where there might have been more content. I think so, you know, but at the same time, it's this is this is the product that we got. And and, you know, the movie was rushed out because, you know, Infinity War is coming and they had to get it out before Infinity War, um, before Endgame. So, you know, and it, it feels like unlike Black Panther, this felt like a Marvel product less than a Marvel film. I I agree. Which really 100%. hurt me as as a as a fan of the of the film. I still enjoyed the film a lot, but I felt that there was uh, a lot more that could have been done. And I think that Marvel recognizes these problems though because and I think uh Thor 3, Thor Ragnarok was the biggest course correction that they they the best course correction they could have done because they took the worst film in the Marvel Canonical franchise, like, possibly objectively the worst yeah. in the franchise, and then came out with, like, everyone's in the top five. Ragnarok is, is always up there for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Now, to talk about story choices, I've, that's my criticism. Now I'm going to literally critique All right. story so- Do you want to that- talk about the eye? Yes. Do you want to talk? I feel like you want to talk yes. about the eye. Yes, Then now I get to the eye. <laughs> so, Nick Fury essentially gets his eye scratched out by the flurkin who is disguised as a kitty. Okay? The flurkin is disguised as a kitty and he just scratches Nick Fury's eye. I thought that was I thought that was a clever twist. I thought it was funny. 
It was about just as clever as the Mandarin tri- twist in Iron Man 3. I thought that was clever, too. Maybe I I'm mean, it was idiot. clever, but it was also equally divisive. Like, you know, t- people... I'm not going to say you have a right to be pissed off at that decision, but you kind of had a right to be pissed off at that decision. You okay. know, the Mandarin is a... Is a, is a well-known comic book character, mm-hmm. and they wanted to see that, and they were pretty much, you know, juked out of it. I felt like the same way with how Nick Fury lost his eye, because that was supposed to be like a, how did he lose his eye? Oh, Well, he did oh. say that the last time he trusted somebody, somebody he, he lost, lost an eye. eye. And he is a very different Nick Fury than the Nick Fury we see in Avengers. Because not only that, but the Tesseract being involved. Because mm-hmm. now you got to think back to Captain, the first Captain America movie, right? Mm, it fell through the plane. It fell in through the, the plane? In mid-flight. After, after Red Skull was ejected into space, it fell through the plane and Steve crashed miles away. So I went back and checked. I did. You did? You did? Okay. Because I, I was just like, wait. One more comment about it is uh, apparently a huge portal in the sky or a country dropping on the earth was not an important enough thing to summon Captain Marvel. <laughs> the Avengers were on it. The, oh, the Avengers were on it. The, that, Avengers <laughs> on it. the Avengers got it. We didn't need Captain Marvel. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I guess, you know, half of... I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know what the scale is for calling Captain Marvel. Like, she was like, here, just call me when you get in trouble. And it's just like, okay, when I get in trouble, when the world gets in trouble, like, what's the scale here? Because there was a portal that happened and aliens were out, but we had a team on it, so it was kind of under control. What, did, like, did she have her on the pager? Like, hey, you know, there's a portal open. Okay, is anybody else there? I mean, we got a team here, but, you know, you Well, can then don't too. call me. I'm busy. All right, well, I'm busy freeing, <laughs> protecting these scrolls. Yep. Like That's I said, it, tell us what you guys think. <laughs> did you like it? Did you hate it? Tell us why. Let us know. Are we completely confused? Maybe we are. And, Maybe. hey, don't feel bad for not liking the film. It's you know what there is shame the in? What? Being misogynistic asshole. Yes. Don't be a misogynistic asshole. Yeah. Be Make a your misogynistic own decision. asshole. Make, Make your own decision, decisions. Guys. But don't be an asshole. Yeah. All right? There we go. That's, that's, that's what JB says. Well, if you enjoyed it, hit that like button. And like, subscribe. Make sure you click the updates and all that to keep yourselves notified on what happens next on the channel. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of Co-op, Co-op Reviews. Reviews. Peace out, guys. Thank <laughs> you.